think it'll be a mix of both, so it'll be a bit serious, but also a um, bit of humour thrown in. Like, you know, most things, there has to be a bit of humour in it. It's just to, for people to see the true image of Muslim women. I think it's just a way of life and attitudes of people towards them here in Ireland and maybe you know, behind closed doors which you don't really see in the media and things, just a different perception maybe than I have of the Muslim way of life at the minute. I remember this one day getting on the bus for my youngest son and when you get on the bus in a hijab everybody thinks you don't speak English. Oh, would you look at your one in her get up? <laughs> so I would say, oh, good morning, on will to go ma. That'd shut them up, I can tell you. Well, I think it's important because I believe the best way to have a really good insight into Muslim women's life, it's actually to hear their stories, and listen what, to what they have to say, because they have plenty of things to say and to share just to have advantage of this, to be more understand about each other. Because, because really we feel that we are in problem to understand each other. You wouldn't believe the things you hear. Do you lot eat frozen fish? Are you bald under that? Uh, have you got cancer? What do you eat for Christmas? Northern Ireland has a diverse and growing Muslim population and it's vital that their voices, particularly women's voices, are heard. And that's why the Hijabi Monologues is so exciting. It's an opportunity for Muslim women and all minority women's voices to be heard. And we're really hopeful that that will begin to challenge stereotypes that form barriers to racial inclusion in Northern Ireland. Because what we really want is an inclusive and equal society. And we hope that that's a step towards that. And I texted everyone at work to say, I am a Muslim. <laughs> I waited and I waited. But actually, no one better denied it. Their response was Do you think we employed you because of your religion? And sure, no one cares how you dress. After all those weeks of waiting and wondering, I was almost disappointed. Ah, no. <laughs> you know, this will reflect in a positive way for, uh, for uh, Muslim women or uh, Muslim at all because it is, at the end it is about identity, Muslim identity. So I think uh, this, this will, will, will send a strong message to everyone there. We are uh, just very simple people. We are, uh, we are uh, not different. We are same like uh, any people living, eating, drinking, uh, uh, you know, mixing people, uh, sharing people uh, different cultures, uh, so it is uh, really, really, it is um, very interesting. Well, I think it was wonderful. Uh, I was completely bowled over by it. Um, it was so moving, so poignant, and so realistic. Um, it really allowed me to enter their world, and it was just incredibly moving. The war had come to Baghdad, and my family faced terrible, terrible times. My father and mother wanted us, me and my sisters, to leave the city. They said the Americans would throw millions of tons of bombs on Baghdad. We, however, decided that we would not go. This was our home. And that is a simple question or simple story about women. The stories about life. Everyone has a story to tell us. Thank you for the women. They present hijab monologue very well, and we like it. And they Belfast is that is another culture of hijab monologue and all people they respect hijab monologue is very good. It's given me an insight into their life which I hadn't had before just because I hadn't had the opportunity to learn more about them. You know I, I, I think it challenged me on the level of how I look at identity and Muslim identity and you know am I one of those types that they talk about you know. Um, um, excuse me uh, uh, could you tell me I've just been so curious. I noticed that uh, some, some, some girls wear black, but you, you are wearing purple. A cue of tribal interstitial kinships. And I think the other thing that challenged me as well is looking at how we look at identity in our part of the world. And I think it would have a lot to offer because I think it, it, it was simply about telling stories but stories that reflected identity and culture. Basically, I just thought the play was uh, really, really, really good. I thought it was really enlightening. Um, I also think that 
uh, opportunities like this are vital in breaking down the, the barriers, if you like, because I, I think there's something about the monologues and hearing someone's personal stories. Yeah, you know what? If everybody else talks about me, I should be able to tell my own story. My story. I found the monologues quite educational. Um, as someone who has a vague idea of what Islam is and what it represents, especially for women, I thought this was a great space to learn more, especially because in Zimbabwe where I grew up in, there was no hijabi. We never talked about religion, it was never an issue. We never had religious wars. So everyone did what they did and it was not an issue, but it was a great space to learn and to understand more and to be less judgmental as well. So I think this work should keep going on and help us form, especially understand not just other people's identities, but our own as well. A lot of people know hijab, but uh, they uh, didn't know uh, hijab fluently. I think it's a good idea to show that for people. For me, it was one of the most challenging and moving nights I've had in the theatre for a long time. It was wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and it's a credit to everybody involved.